All right, here we go. If you've got your Bibles, uh, let's go to Job chapter 22, verses 28 to 30. Today we're going to be talking about proclamation. Yeah, this is a very important principle. It's a value that, uh, that must go beyond theory and really go into application in this season, especially in light of that the, the tide is changing right now. The stats are changing right now. We are looking at, uh, at this process of coming out of the caves versus going into the caves uh, like we were in just a couple months ago. So this is a, this is a very important season. And it's important that, um, that we recognize that what we are declaring, that the things that we are saying, uh, that these are the fruit of what we're actually believing within our hearts. And so we will be abiding in the future um, uh, and where we are abiding in the future will be dictated by what we're declaring in the present. Okay, uh, Job chapter 22, verses 28 to 30. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person." And he shall deliver the island of the innocent, and it is delivered by the pureness of your hands. Let me ask you a question. Have you found yourself regretting things that you have said recently, maybe because of the pressure, because of the testing, because of uh, 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 places where the enemy has wanted to take you in your own heart, in your own soul, that's not you? And here's the thing. Let's just be real for a second. The enemy wants to take us places that are not us. So just because you think a thought doesn't mean that thought originated with you. But here's what happens. That once we declare a feeling, once we actually speak it out, that is when the process of, of, of imagination can become a manifestation. Because it's almost like when we say something, it's almost like we're declaring our agreement with it, if that makes sense. Now, um, so that's the question. Have you said something recently that you have regretted? Do you wish you didn't say it? Are there things that you have said recently that have carried some consequences? If not recently, perhaps you can look back um, over the period and timeline of your own life and look at unfortunate places that you arrived to and you actually arrived in these locations because of your declarations. In the same way, maybe you can think of some times that you have arrived in some positive places because of what you have declared and decreed. Listen, I know that within, um, within other world religions, I know that within even the New Age, that there's a tremendous amount of um, emphasis put on words and what we speak but let me just say this that there is more about words in the bible than any other um uh false religion okay uh l let me just say that um that just because another religion says something or hits on something uh, doesn't mean that there's no truth in it that if there's any truth in anything there's got to be some sort of biblical precedent or support um behind it because our god is the way the truth and the life. So the Bible actually begins with God declaring, with God speaking. That Jesus didn't do any miracles unless he first declared it. Listen, Jesus could have snapped his fingers. He could have tapped his toes. He could have, he could have um, uh, done some sort of, he could have done all kinds of mystical gestures. And yet, the consistent way by which the supernatural was engaged through Jesus was the way that his dad did it. That, that Jesus did things the way his father did it. And that is, there was desire and then there was declaration. Okay? And so that's what we're going to be talking about um, uh, together this morning. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So like, that's pretty straight up. First of all, the tongue has power. Okay? It, it, it says so in the word of God. But it has power to do two different things. It has power to create and power to devastate. That every time we speak, we can create or we can 
devastate. Okay? And that's why it's important that we believe the Word of God. We honor the Word of God. And we are intentional to practice the Word of God, especially in this season. Why? Because there's been a lot of devastation up until now. And now we need to see a lot of creation. That means we need to see the sons and daughters of God leaning into the desires of the Father and that we would begin to declare and to speak and to sing the desire of the Father through our declaration. There is going to be a righteous manifestation on the earth because the desire of the Father is going to be made manifest through the declaration of the sons of God. It's time for us, the people of God, to break our agreement, to break our soul attachments with the dominant political religious narrative that would like to hijack all the opportunity in this season. It's important that we can begin to, to, to bring our soul into rest, that we can lean into uh, the identity of our Father, that we can get his perspective for where we are at and for where he wants to bring us. It's important in this season that we're not just honoring the prophets. That's very, very important if we want to receive a prophet's reward. But we can also lean into the prophetic function of the body of Christ. And that means that every believer needs to be a hearer, that every believer needs to be a seer, and that every believer needs to be a doer of what they are seeing in the Spirit. That we would see it in the Spirit and we would speak it into the earth. That we, would, that we would hear it in the Spirit. We would speak it into the earth. We would hear what the Father is saying and doing, and then we would release that reality on the earth. That it would be on earth as it is in heaven. That faith without works is dead. And we activate these supernatural realities with the power of proclamation. We're going to see here that, um, uh, uh, that when we look at the tension and the battle for what we're feeling in our soul. That there is a battle right now that we would lose control of our soul. Why? Because if we can lose control of our soul, we will declare things and those things that we declare will become a world. It will become a realm of all sorts of various options that are not redemptive, but they are Destructive. Let's just talk about a couple of questions here really quick. Um, what is created, okay? What gets established? Job would, Job would say that when you, dec when you decree a thing, that there is a, an established reality, a, a cause and effect. So when you speak, there's going to be a corresponding reaction, okay? So when we are wrestling with, let's say, fear, when we are afraid, okay, what gets established through our decrees? Okay, um, for myself, that when I feel fear within my own heart, I don't usually get very loud. I often get very quiet. That when I feel overwhelmed by fear, oftentimes I will kind of disappear into the silence. It's not because things are silent. It's because, it's because when I feel myself getting gripped by that voice of fear, that oftentimes that fear comes to rob me of, of my voice, of, of, my, my, of my authority. And so when I feel fear, I get, I get quiet. I go s silent. And, and, here, and here's the reason why. Because here's the thing is that silence is actually quite loud. That it may look like I am being quiet, but inside there can be this very loud voice of intimidation. And it's important that we recognize um, that fear comes to get us to disappear. And so if you're in this current season and things are shifting and changing and the Lord wants for you to begin sowing your word so that there can be a manifestation of kingdom righteousness within your life, within your family expression, within your church expression, then it's very, very important that you recognize that fear comes to get you to disappear. And it's important that you don't lose your voice. Okay, it's important that you don't lose um, that place by which you can bring influence 
into the earth. Why? Because your voice is your influence. It's your voice where there is a where there is a frequency of authority that is carried out through our voice. It's it's through our voice that we can we can give life and expression to the desires of our heart and the things that need to be sta- stated in order for um, dysfunctional patterns to be interrupted. Don't lose your authority in this season. Don't forget about who you are. Don't forget about whose you are. And remember, fear comes to get you to disappear. And in this season, I can't have anyone disappearing. I, yeah, we can't afford for any kingdom son and daughter to disappear in this season. Here's another question for you. What's being established through our words when we find ourselves angry? Okay, um, when, when we find ourselves um, uh, 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 really, like, here's the thing about anger. That, that again, sometimes that there's something about anger when it gets into the soul where it wants to rob us of self-control. Okay, there's uh, righteous anger, okay, and then there's unrighteous anger, okay. You know righteous anger because it's actually motivating righteous behavior. Okay, but unrighteous anger wants to rob your soul of all self-control so that you'll say things that you don't mean. And what happens there? You say something that you didn't even mean and then you end up in a place you never meant to go. I remember um, I was once working with a couple and they were uh, meeting with me in my office and um, and and they and so I said, all right. So I looked at the guy I said, what did you tell your wife? And he said this very mean thing that he said to his wife. And, and he said, you, you always do this. And I said, well, is that true? Does she always do that? And he goes, no. I said, well, then why did you say it? He goes, well, because I was angry. I looked at her. I said, well, then what did you say back? She goes, I said, you are this because you always do this. I said, well, did you mean that? She goes, no, of course I didn't mean that. The, the conversation escalated and escalated and escalated to where he finally said, well, then why don't we just get a divorce? I said to him, well, did you want to get a divorce? And he said, no, I didn't want to get a divorce. I said to her, then what did you say? And she said, okay, fine. And I said, well, then did you want a divorce? And she goes, no. So here we see all these lies that were being spoken because the soul had lost control. Why? Because of unrighteous anger. Okay? And all these things were being said. And with each lie that was being declared, a destructive realm was then being created in the imagination. Here's the thing. That we create worlds with our words. When we speak, we can create something that we can actually see, something that we do know that our imagination is just as real as, re, as, as reality as far as how our brain is impacted, as far as the chemicals in our body that, that are released. There's, all, there's loads of incredible science about how our brains are unable to decipher the difference between reality and the imagination as far as how when we give ourselves to a thought, that thought becomes a realm, and that realm can begin to release various chemicals um, within our own within our own bodies. My point is this: that we've got to be accountable for the things that we've said when our when we lost control of our soul. What do you mean by being accountable? Well, if we go back to um, to Job twenty two, verses twenty eight to thirty, it says there is a lifting up. And he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island of the innocent. And it is delivered by the pureness of thine hands. The point is this. And we can absolutely shift a negative reality that we have created with our words. We can absolutely shift it. How? Through repentance. And what's repentance? Repentance is when we have enough humility and enough brokenness to admit with our words, to actually declare that what we said, what we did was not righteous. It was sinful. 
And because of what we did, it created options and a reality that was not a part of the intent or will of our heart, nor was it a part of the will or intent of God's heart. So when we spoke these things out, we were actually speaking an ungodly reality. We were actually speaking an anti-Christ, an anti-relational, an anti-anointing reality that we were actually speaking out a Christ-hostile reality that was not in accordance with the will of God. And we take full responsibility for that. We break all agreement with it. And we ask that people would release us from any sort of judgment that they place on us because of what we said or did. When we do this, all of a sudden, I'm telling you through humility and brokenness, through genuine brokenness, genuine humility. And, and, and sometimes when we're hurt and sometimes when we're angry, that being broken and being humble, it's one of the most difficult things. Why? Because there's something about being angry where, where we want to guard our pride, like our pride sets in and it begins to tell us that we are a victim of a, of a conversation, of a situation. And here's the thing that, that when we are a victim, it's like we self like uh, Solomon would say that that offense it it, 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 it like it fortifies a city like there's no going in and going out like like for an offended person it's like there's there's therefore now no ability for there to be revelation or or epiphany or or breakthrough why because offense it fortifies us it, it locks us down it puts us in a bunkered state in a in a warlike posture right but brokenness and humility it can subvert that place of pride that brokenness and 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 humility it can cause for people's um, uh, uh, walls to begin to come down. And this is really what we need. We need for our walls to come down. And if we're offended and if, if we're fortified and if we're bunkered down and if we're triggered out, we've got to have the brokenness and the humility to admit that and to say we don't want to remain that way. But if we have caused that, we should have the, um, I think that believers have an obligation to be to be the bigger person to and, and to and to be broken to repent to take responsibility for what we said for what we did and we declare we declare the perspective of God we declare the will of God and we declare our error and tr- and subverting the will of God through our negative word choice and if we will do this God will honor our repentance i want everybody to say this out loud god will honor Good, good, good. Let's do this. Say it out loud. God will honor my repentance. Just declare that. God will honor my repentance. And when I say repentance, I'm not talking about ripping our clothes and sobbing hysterically and, and going berserk. You know, some people don't even know how to repent unless there's a, a line at the front of a church meeting where they have to run to that, that line. That, that's a form. That's a very limited form of repentance. That when we say repentance, it means that we are humble enough to, to step into a higher perspective, the perspective of God. To to, to repent means that my old self-justified perspective is now outdated and expired and now I am accountable to take on God's perspective. That's what repentance is. It simply means take on God's perspective and repent of idolizing your old perspective. So many times we think we know the answers. So many times we think we know the right way. So many times we think, we do, I will, I will, I will. And it is so imp- there, there has to come a point where we can say, not my will, but your will be done. I repent. I lay down my will. I lay down my perspective and I take on the Father's perspective. All right, good, good, good. The next thing is, what is being established through our words when we, are you ready for this? When we worship. What's being established through our decrees when we worship the Lord? I'll tell you this, worship is a plumb line for our proclamation that when we begin to sing to the Lord, we begin to declare to him who he is. Uh, it's, we, we, all of a sudden we begin to see the plumb line of God's word that begins this holding us accountable for everything we said and did up to that point. 
that there's something about, there's something about worship where um, it begins to recalibrate what we're declaring. It's like, it's like we can get away with saying so many things that are simply not true. We begin to worship and the Holy Spirit begins to convict us of the sin of our declaration and proclamation. For that very reason, I think it's really important that when we get to the end of this service, that we don't just turn this service off. We don't just tu tune into the next service. So many times I think Christians are addicted to more information, addicted to more revelation, but we're not addicted to the presence that comes from the incarnation. I think so many times we receive more information, we, we receive more revelation, but because we have not taken on the discipline of practicing his presence, that, that information and revelation just remains in seed form and it never quite, it never really germinates. It never really goes into our hearts where it can really transform us. It just becomes a, 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 a more cognitive data packets that clog us up and make us more religious and where we think, where we think we're smarter than what we actually are, where we're, where we're, 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 we're there's more profession than there actually is actual literal possession. Okay? Are you in possession of these spiritual truths so that there's actually the fruit of the Spirit and not just regurgitating fruit of the Spirit sound bites? Love, joy, peace, patience, patience. We can have the right language, but we can lack. You know, uh, St. Augustine said, preach the gospel always and if necessary, use words. This is what he's saying. Your bumper sticker shouldn't be the thing that's giving you away as a Christian. Your t-shirt shouldn't be the thing that's telling people that you're a Christian. And even your own preaching shouldn't be the indicators that you love the Lord. That love, that the fruit of love, the act of love, that it should speak for itself. That your peace should speak for yourself. The, the, your ability to trust people to not have to control people, that these actions should speak for themselves. Worship reminds us that it's Jesus that's still on the throne. Worship reminds us that we need to get off of the throne that belongs to Jesus. We need to remember that it is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He is the one by which we worship. It is Jesus. He is the one by which we have submitted our lives to our dreams. It is because of Jesus that we will fear no evil. Why? Because he is with us. And it is so important that we realize that, that this isn't at the end of the day a question of are you declaring positive things or negative things. No, the question is, is that will we use our word choice? Will we use our time to respond to him and to, and to declare to him, God, you are good and your steadfast love endures forever. God, I am angry and yet I declare your kindness, the spirit of your kindness. It will, it, it is at work in my life. The fruit of the spirit of gentleness is at work in my life. God, I will praise you. The call to action is that we not stop, that we're, that we're not negative anymore. This is not a, a message where I'm like, stop being negative. Start proclaiming the positive. Like, no, this is, you can find that on, on, on all kinds of goofy YouTube channels, okay? The, the, the call to action in this season for sons and daughters in the kingdom of God is will we praise the Lord with these lips? Will we honor him by declaring and releasing the reality of who he is on the earth through our words, through our songs, through the, David would say, may the meditation of my heart, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. I, I love David because of his brutal honesty that before the Lord, David would come and he would pour out his complaint and he would say, Father, this is how, this is how I feel right now. And yet I know my feelings are off 
because I know the truth is you are with me. You will not forsake me, that you will fight for me. I like 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But instead, rejoice in as much you participate in the sufferings of Christ that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed in the pressure in the crushing in the testing we can say God you are good Jesus I love you I worship you I proclaim you and all of a sudden before we know it these things that we are declaring it becomes the realm by in which we are living all of a sudden we find our, ourselves not waking up into panic but we find ourselves waking up into his glorious presence we find ourselves not reflecting on what if God fails us but we find ourselves waking up every morning into that place of his manifest faithfulness everyone watching you need to know this promise God will be faithful he will be faithful in your family he will be faithful in your finances he will be faithful in your physical body and that no matter what happens know this he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be worshiped he is worthy of our passion and our adoration we are about to enter into a season of intentional praise and worship we are going to begin hosting um, uh, virtual digital uh, nights of worship here on Facebook and on on YouTube where the purpose isn't going to be to give out more information the purpose is going to be to summon nations to the incarnation to summon nations um, uh, uh, on, on the World Wide Web in these live moments where they can encounter Jesus you know here's here's the thing if you're watching this and and you're like yeah but I don't love God that way so how can I worship God that way it would be it would be insincere and this is what I would tell you if you're if you're watching this right now and you say Pastor Darren I I I honor your passion but I'm not there yet and if, if you're watching this, 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 is what I need, this is what I need I need to tell you first of all thank you for watching this long or maybe you just stumbled on uh, just now and thank you for thank you for being here and thank you for your honesty you'd say Pastor Darren I admire your passion, but I don't share your passion uh, for Jesus. And, and, and this, is, this is what I can say, that, um, that as long as you are open to this beautiful process of being romanced by the Lord, that even watching here and now is a part of God's sovereign plan for your life because you can't choose Him. He's already chosen you. And He would use a stream like this like 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 he would use conversations he would use all kinds of various forms and factors to let you know that you are being pursued by him it's not that you've chosen God you still don't really know what you think about the Lord and yet he in his faithfulness he in his gentleness he in his love is pursuing you here's the question that I have for you Will you allow yourself to be pursued by him? Will you allow for your heart to remain open? And will you allow for this process of being romanced by the Lord? Will you be, will, are you open to saying, first of all, I'm not passionate about God. But honestly, and maybe you've never said this out loud, but, but I do believe. I'm not passionate about God, but I do believe in God. There is incredible power in our belief, incredible power in faith. I think this would be a great place for people to begin their awakening story is by acknowledging, do you believe? Do you believe? And if so, I'd like for you to pray with me right now.
right right stinking now and I want for you to do it so loud in your heart I want for your heart to light up I want for your mind to light up I want for everything to be I want for you to be fully present right here in this moment and I want you to declare right out the, the, again to proclaim to decree this thought that that a reality can be established by taking what exists in our heart and by speaking it out that that's how the earth but that's how the universe, that's how the cosmos was formed. And that's how a part of our salvation can become an actualization by us coming into the will, by coming into agreement with the will of our Father and saying, I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Let's just do it right now. Just say, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and in Him will I trust. And if you do that, I'm telling you, there is right now, right now, the Holy Spirit is coming and He will awaken you. He will awaken your senses. He will awaken your imagination to who you are and to who he is. And that is our prayer at Seattle Revival Center. That every heart, that every person that engages with any of our events, with any of our services, that every person, their hearts would be awakened to their identity and to their destiny in Christ Jesus. I know that God is at work. I know he is pursuing you. I know that you are worth pursuing. And if you are watching this, let us partner together as we come out of this time of quarantine. Whether, you know, and it's going to take some time, but I believe now is the time to not react to fear in the present but that we would begin creating the future by sowing our righteous declaration. Here's a righteous declaration for you. You are loved. You are loved by God. You are loved by this house. And that's the absolute truth. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of this service today.